Hey guys, another Red Dev here. Welcome back to a new video. I have some exciting news. We are finally on, uh, uh, don't press the button, game part three, I forgot what the name was. Um, yeah, we are on don't press the button, game part three. I've added three new events and some small improvements, um, that you'll see. So the first event is, oh, we just got it, customize your avatar. So that's actually the third event. So you can go ahead and change your clothes and your appearance with hat accessories and um, clothes. <laughs> I already said that. Um, which is actually from another tutorial, or two other tutorials I made before. Alright, and the next one we have is Survive the Lava. As you can see, lava is rising. And this island is with a little building has spawned here, which you can climb up to escape from the lava. Of course, if you fall in, you will die. And uh, it's a bit, uh, we spawned back in the lava, so it's probably not a good idea to die. We're just gonna keep dying over and over again. Alright, and now, as you can see, um, this is the second event I added, actually. It, it says, get to higher ground. And as you can see, there's a giant wall of water coming, and I can't get up there in time because I was too busy showing you guys the tsunami. Oh, actually, am I gonna escape? Oh, I actually escaped. Okay, so as you can see, it's just a tsunami, and if you, of course, it touches you, you die. Alright, so, yeah, those are all the events I added, and I think they're pretty cool. And, uh, so yeah, be sure to watch to the end to get them all. And, um, if you are excited, or if this video helps you out, uh, definitely leave a like and consider subscribing. It really helps me out a lot. Um, this video is gonna take, like, five hours to edit, and I'm not excited. But anyways, let's just get right into it. Alright guys, so before we get to making um, our new disasters and suggestions, first I want to make a few improvements to the game. Um, just, they're very tiny improvements, um, but um, I just think that um, I should just <laughs> make them, I guess, I don't know. So, I'm going to go ahead and get uh, select these for zombie spawns, because I don't think there's enough spawns. So I wanna, I'm gonna make eight spawns instead of, um, eight spawns instead of four spawns. So I'm just gonna duplicate them with Control D, and then move them over here, just like that. So now there are eight spawners instead of four. So you can see now if I click the button, eight zombies spawn in instead of only four. And I think it would make it a lot more intense with more players than just one. Um, so. And of course you can add as many zombie spawns as you want. Alright, and the last improvement I want to make for now is making the coins can't collide. As you can see, if you jump on a coin, you can see that you hover in the air for a little bit. And same thing if you walk towards it, it's, you're going to be stuck there for a little bit sometimes. Um, because it takes a little bit um, for the coin to disappear. And zombies can actually get stuck behind the coin because they can't pick it up. Um, so just a little improvement. They're gonna go ahead and uh, select all the coins. <clears throat> and set can collide to off. And then in server storage as well, in the obby, you can select all the coins in the obby and set that to can collide. Also, um, you can collide off as well, I mean, um, so, yeah, now we're going to get on to the first suggestion. So, Tesla Pro Gaming suggestion. Can you make so, can you make uh, it so that if you push the button, the disaster is lava and buildings will spawn. So that's what we're going to work on first. So, I'm going to create a little building area for um, the buildings. Of course, um... I'm going to use the same platform that's used for the obby um, because they already have an area set up with no spawns over here from the first episode um, for the building, I mean for the platform to spawn in. So in server storage, I'm just going to get um, the obby uh, ground parts if you can find it. Alright, I found it, so I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate it and move it into workspace. Yeah, because this is what we're gonna work with for now, um, as we ground. Alright, so I can, uh, I can delete the ground script that kills the player when they step on it, and I can also change the color, I guess. And I'll keep the material of it to metal, because I like the shiny look on the ground. Um, and 
yeah, that's it. Make sure you delete the kill script in it. And, uh, yeah, you can also go ahead and rename this to ground for this event, the lava. Alright, so now what we're going to do is we can create our building that the player is going to climb on real quick. So we can insert a part. Um, and we're just going to scale it into a building. Alright, we have our building, but we still need a way for the players to climb it. So what we're going to do now is we can go ahead. Well, first of all, I'm going to make this metal as well. Anyway, so what we can do is we can go ahead and in workspace, we can put the plus sign and insert a truss part. Um, just like that. You can see if I can find it. There we go. You have this little truss part right here. And this is actually climbable, so if we scale it up, we get um, like a ladder type thing. And uh, the players can climb it to the top of the building. Oh, uh, make sure you anchor all these parts as well, because uh, we don't want them to fall in the void when the disaster starts. So now you can see that I can climb up the truss. And I might as well make multiple of these little ladders so that way, because uh, there's not going to be more than one player. Uh, when the, uh, when people actually play it. And also, my, I'm going to set the material to um, rust so it's easier to see. Corroded metal. There you go. There you go. So now we have multiple little ladders to climb up. And um, now we can get to work on scripting the actual disaster. So what we can do is we can create a little part. It doesn't matter what part it is. Uh, and we're just going to scale it up to be cover the entire um, uh, area here. This is going to be our lava. You can see it actually kind of looks like lava already. Um, I can make uh, the color a bit orange, because this is where the lava is going to be. Orange. Does that look like lava? Yeah, it looks like lava, doesn't it? Alright, so we have a little lava here. And yeah, we're going to scale it up to cover as far as you want it to go. So I want my lava to rise to about here. Alright, and we can go ahead and name this part to lava ending point. Alright, and then you can duplicate it and move it down uh, to the bottom. Keep the size the, the same. It's very important. You keep the size the same. You scale and then you just move it directly under the ending point. And you can rename this one lava uh, starting point. Starting point, like that. And you can make uh, both of these transparent. Uh, can collide off and cast shadow off. And make sure to anchor them as well. Alright, so now what we can do is we can go ahead and insert a folder. I uh, can rename it to lava. And we're going to move everything for the lava disaster, the lava ending point, the lava starting point, um, the building of course, um, the ladder or truss, and even the ground. And we can put it in the lava folder, and then we can move that folder into server storage, just like that. Now you can see there's no sign of anything being here, but it's going to be moved into workspace when you land on that disaster. And of course, um, you can add in the delete script that we add to all the disasters, so they're deleted after 30 seconds. So you can just get a copy of the delete script from the obby and paste it into the lava folder. If you haven't seen this video, by the way, go check out all the other videos um, to get to this point. The delete script is basically a script that destroys um, the folder after 30 seconds of it being a workspace. That's why it's disabled. Alright, so... What we can do now is we can actually get to scripting our event. So in our event script, in the button here, in our main script, uh, we can go ahead and add a new event. In order to do that, it says local event equals math not random, uh, 1 comma 3. We can set to 1 comma 4 because now there's 4 events. And um, now we can do down here in the event function where uh, we can get to coding the event. So down here we can do else if um, event is equal equal to um, four, then uh, what we're going to do is we're going to have the event here. So we're gonna create 
text at the top of the screen right here um, where it says what we do in the event. Uh, it's going to say stub beat the obby. It's going to say So when you land on it, it should say survive the lava on the top of the screen. Um, then that's what we did in episode two. All right, so now what we can do is create a variable for um, the lava folder, or not the lava folder. So uh, yeah, we just, yeah the lava folder. Okay, the local lava um, do folder is equal to game not replicate storage. It should be um, server storage. Um, that lava folder. We don't need to wait for child actually, because this is it. The game has time to load, um, so we don't need that. All right, so we can just have lava, um, and then we can create um, lava. We're gonna clone the lava, so lava folder colon clone dot parent is going to be equal to workspace like that. The, the lava is going to appear in the workspace. So now what we can do is local lava start is going to be equal to lava start is going to be equal to game dot workspace dot and then we can do lava we can actually just copy the name right here lava starting point you can copy the name and paste it right here and local lava end is going to be equal to and then we can just copy lava ending point name uh, just like that game dot um, workspace dot lava ending point just like that all right and now what we're going to do is we're going to create a variable for tween service because tween service is going to be how um, the lava rises to the top all right so now what we can do uh, is we so we're going to create a tween service variable now. So local tween service service um, is going to be equal to um, game colon get service tween service of course. Um, and then what you can do create a variable for tween info. So local info is going to be equal to tween info dot new. And we can do I want it to take 25 seconds to rise to the top. So 25. Uh, comma, and then what we're going to do is enum dot using style dot line near, uh, and then comma enum dot using direction, um, and we're going to do dot out, comma zero, comma false, comma zero, just like that. So that's our tween info. And we can do local. Tween is going to be equal to tween service colon create, um, and then we can do lava lava start comma um, info comma and then pointy brackets. Um, and we can do C frame is going to be equal to lava end dot C frame lava end dot C frame. Just like that. Oh, and we can also do a tween colon play at the end. Tween colon play, just like that. All right, but before we test it, another thing I forgot um, that I may have stake on this. So in the uh, lava folder, the lava starting point, you can go ahead and set the transparency to zero. So make sure the transparency of it is set to zero um, uh, so that way you can see it. Or else it's just going to be invisible lava, so you you don't want that. Also, I'm going to make the uh, the lava ending point, uh, or the lava starting point, start lower, and uh, they can actually go ahead and scale it up. Um, maybe like 15 or so, and then just like that. And then they can also move this down. So I move this down. And then they can also scale it up another um, 15, the studs. 
Just so that way it uh, starts a bit lower. Alright, so now I can go ahead and move this back into lava. Oh, and another thing is... Well, another thing in the lava starting point is we can add a delete script. Um, so we can... Uh, uh, kill script, I mean. So, for the script, we can just say script.parent.touch or connect function. We can connect function. And we can set the parameter to function to hit. So, um, we can do hit if hit dot parent colon find first child humanoid. Um, then uh, we can go ahead and do hit dot parent dot humanoid dot help is going to be equal to zero. Oh, they misspelled health, so I'm gonna go ahead and fix that. There we go. So let's go ahead and test it to see if it works. All right, so I landed on event number four, and the lava is not rising. The lava starting point is not a valid number of workspace. Let's see. Oh, yeah, because it should be in lava. Okay. And also we forgot to enable the delete script, so we need to fix that too. So what we can do is, instead of workspace, you can do workspace dot lava. Uh, so instead of, instead of just workspace, workspace dot lava, because that's where it's going to be. And um, that should be, that should just fix it. Another thing is we need to um, just uh, fix the delete script, so, um, or enable the delete script, so that way it's deleted. The obby folder is deleted from workspace when the event is uh, over. So then here we can do game um, dot workspace dot lava. Um, dot delete dot disabled is going to be equal to false so we're going to be enabling the script again um, so that way it gets deleted all right so you can see it landed in lava and the lava is indeed rising let's hope they get there in time you can see it said the vent survived the lava and it is eating everything so let's see how high it rises make sure it rises to the top you could of course add some like uh, a um, parkour area to get to the top as well. You can see if I land in the lava, I die. So it works. Um, so that's good. And of course, like I said, you can add like a parkour area across building rooftops or something to make it more uh, fun instead of just climbing a boring ladder. It's pretty, pretty lame. Um, but there you have it. There's the lava. And it works, so, uh, yeah. Alright, so next, um, Kick or Ban Gaming, I'm sorry, I think that's how you pronounce it, um, suggested, um, I was wondering if you could show us how to make more complex games, like maybe a tsunami, so that's what I'm going to be doing now, a tsunami. So, let's go ahead and get right into it. So, what I, put, what I plan to do is make some tsunami come from here and we're gonna have the same obby platform but it's gonna have parkour on it and you need to parkour to the top so that way the tsunami um, doesn't kill you so that's what we're going to make <clears throat> so first of all for the second time in this episode I'm going to go into server storage and I'm going to copy the ground in um, the obby and paste it into workspace and of course you can delete the kill script uh, rename it to ground and also you can change the color of it if you would like to. So I'm going to change the color of it to, um, I'll change it to blue. Now if you want to, you can also change the material. But I think I'm just going to keep it as metal because um, that's the way I want it. And now we're going to go ahead and create our actual tsunami. So we can enter the part, rotate it, and scale it up. Um, to be the size of the island just like that so wipe out everything uh, you can make it a bit thicker and a bit higher like that so this is like a giant wall of water that's what it's basically what you know means are. all right and then we're gonna move it back here just like that and I'm gonna set the um, <clears throat> I'm gonna set the uh, material of it to be foil, <coughs> foil just like that, 
and yeah so it should come here and it's going to sweep over the island yeah and it's gonna sweep over the island um <clears throat> just like that and it's gonna make it to the other side all right so yeah there's a little um tsunami part actually we might probably start it back here and then it's going to get to the obby on the other side so people have more time to climb. So it's going to go from here to there. Make sure both of these parts are anchored. And we're going to use tween service again. Um, so you can name this one to Tsunami um, Start. Uh, start like that. And this one to Tsunami End. Just like that. <coughs> and we can set uh, Tsunami Start to be transparent. Also, I'm gonna move Tsunami in a bit closer, like that. Um, this one, a little bit further away, so that way it doesn't, um, the animation goes a little bit slower, you know, I don't know. I, oh, wait, I messed up. We can use set Tsunami and Transparency to 1, and Tsunami Start is going to be visible, so no transparency, just like that. So now what we're going to do is we can insert a folder into Workspace, and we can go ahead and name it to tsunami just like that and <clears throat> in the tsunami start we can actually add in the script i forgot to do that we're gonna make a kill script right now um actually we can just copy the script from the other disaster the the lava disaster and paste it here because it's, it's the same script <clears throat> sorry my throat is really hurting right now all right so we're gonna put this and the, the two parts in the ground into the tsunami folder and you can also um, you can move it into um, server storage and then of course we can get the delete script that we put in all our disasters and paste it into here so again what the what the delete script does is after 30 seconds it's just going to delete this once the disaster starts and it's disabled, so it won't do it when the disaster is there. Um, <clears throat> watch the first video if you're confused about it. Now we just need to get to scripting the event. So in the main script right here, uh, instead of being four disasters, now we're going to make five, so one comma five. <clears throat> um, you can go ahead and get to scripting it. So you can do else if, else if, event is going to be equal to five then uh, we can get to scripting so we can set the text of the event here to um get to higher ground just like that and so what we're going to do now is create some variables so we can do local tsunami uh folder going to be equal to game dot replicate storage dot tsunami folder i'm not replicate storage why do i keep doing replicate storage server storage dot um tsunami folder just like that or tsunami not tsunami folder there we go and we can do um uh tsunami folder Tsunami folder colon clone um, dot parent is going to be equal to a workspace. All right, and now what we can do is we can create variables for the uh, for the start and ending in the workspace. So local to I keep spelling tsunami right uh, wrong. Tsunami um, start is going to be equal to game dot workspace colon wait for child and then you're going to get um the uh tsunami start when it is put into workspace so you can just go ahead and copy the name of it so when it's pasted into workspace um or it's cloned into workspace i should say uh we're going to get the starting point and then we can also get the ending point and the local tsunami end is going to be equal to game dot workspace colon wait for child and we're going to get tsunami end just like that tsunami end 
and now we can go ahead and get to scripting the tween. Um, so it's going to be very similar to the last one. So what we're going to do is we're going to do local um, tween. Actually, in the last um, the last one where we put the tween service into here. It says local tween service equals game porn get service tween service. We can actually cut that line out and we're going to paste it above the functions in case we need. So that way, if we need to do more um, tween service in the future, we don't need to paste it in every single line. So it's going to save time. They can just cut this line out from event four and paste it on the top. All right. We're going to do local uh, tween. And no, not local tween. Local info is going to be equal to tween info um, dot new. All right, and then we can do twenty five comma uh not twenty five. Uh, I can do let's do twenty seven point five. I guess um comma enum dot easing style easing style dot linear, and we're gonna do um, comma enum dot easing direction dot out comma zero comma false comma zero just like that all right and then we can create a variable for the tween the so local tween uh tween is going to be equal to um tween service colon create all right and then we're going to do uh, tsunami, um, tsunami start, comma, info, and then in pointy brackets, we can do C frame is going to be equal to tsunami end, and then dot C frame, just like that, and then we can do, um, tween, tween, colon, play, just like that. And now we can go ahead and test if it works. Oh, actually, um, I forgot to do the delete thing. The forgot to de uh, enable the delete script. So we're gonna do uh, what we're gonna do is um, game game dot workspace, um, and we're going to do dot, and we're gonna we can copy the tsunami um, tsunami is um dot delete dot disabled is going to be equal to false so we're going to be disabling the delete so that way it can actually be destroyed so we're going to be disabling the delete script so that way it can be destroyed after 30 seconds um so yeah let's go ahead and see if it works all right so you can see that we got the tsunami event but the tsunami is not moving at all so I'm not sure why we are going to have to figure this out. Cause as you can see, it is just standing there. Why are you standing there? Of course, there is no way to actually um, get to higher ground yet. But right now we're just testing to see if the tsunami works. But clearly, it is not working. Tsunami, you have disappointed me. And it doesn't even delete after this. What? It's not even getting deleted. Oh, okay. So I made. I made a dumb mistake. Okay, so it's the tsunami end and start are not actually in workspace. It is in the tsunami folder. So what we're going to do is game dot workspace dot tsunami and then colon wait for child. So I copied tsunami earlier. We're going to do game dot workspace dot tsunami colon wait for child instead of um, just game dot workspace because it's not in workspace itself. It's in the tsunami so now. Let's go ahead and see if it works. Alright, there you go. You can see we have Tsunami and it is still not working. So it's workspace button. Append, attempt to call a tween info value. Oh, okay. This is this is really done. This is actually really done. Okay. This is even dumber than the last mistake. We forgot to add a comma after info. And that's all we needed to do. <laughs> Just add a comma after info. Now, now let's see if it works. All right, there you go, we got Tsunami, it is not working. Dude, what do you want? Hey. Okay, so I assume this has to be a problem 
with the delete. Um, you get the train plays after the delete. So, game that works face to tsunami. It should be getting tsunami from the delete. Oh my gosh. I figured it out. So, the tween is actually working. Everything about the script is working. It's just that it's my fault because I set the uh, tsunami start comment info and then we're setting it to tsunami start. So, basically, what that means is I set it not to move at all. So, this needs to be tsunami end. I've gotten like 500 obbies. It's like 30 minutes of waiting and it's not even. Okay, there you go. Tsunami, get to higher ground. And it's moving. Yes. Finally. It took way, way longer than it should have. It is just eating everything. Oh no, not the tsunami. And bam, you're dead. You can see it disappears. Alright, so it does work. Okay. Sorry for all the dumb mistakes. Another thing is, you can set uh, King Kawhi and Tsunami start to see uh, Tsunami uh, uh, end to false. Alright, so now what we're going to do is we can put the Tsunami folder back in the workspace and we can start working on a parkour course to get up. So I'm going to make this course fairly simple. It's just going to be a. Um, a um, it's just going to be a few parts that you just jump up on. It's simpler, it's easier, it's going to be easier than the obby. Um, and I'm going to just change the material of it so you can see it better. Just make sure that all your parts are anchored here. Alright guys, so I've made my parkour course. Parkour course, as you can see. Super duper easy. Just make sure that all your parts are anchored. And yeah, oops, I missed. Actually, it's not super duper easy. It's impossible. This jump is too far. Okay, there we go. Now it is super duper easy. Okay, there we go. Now it's super duper easy. So you can see it got to the top, and let's go ahead and test it out in the event. Make sure all your parkour jumps are moved into the tsunami folder. Oops, that's not the tsunami folder. Make sure they're all moved into the tsunami folder. And then you can go ahead and move the tsunami folder back into server storage. And let's go ahead and test it out now. Finally, it has been literally seven minutes of clicking the button. As you can see, I got the disaster. I click the button, I don't get it, so I don't get the disaster. I leave the game, I come back, and I click it again. And I still don't get it. It's been seven minutes of non-stop clicking the button. Finally, you got Tsunami. You can see it's passed through, and we are safe at the top. And I'm dead. Perfect. So, as you can see, the Tsunami does indeed work. After, like, 20 errors, it does work. But practice makes perfect, guys. Remember that. Nobody's... Practice makes perfect, but nobody's perfect. So... Oh, look, I got it again. That's convenient. That would have been useful a bit earlier. Like maybe seven minutes ago. Alright, so now I can go ahead and work on event three. It's been about, I think, two or three months since I've done event one and two. Uh, because I've been taking a little break. And by little, I mean a big break. Um, but yeah, I'm back and I'm excited to do a part. Uh, event three now. So, event three is going to be some uh, avatar like editors. So, we're going to have some clothing givers. And uh, we're also going to have some hat givers and removers. All of those are um, scripts from my old tutorials. Two old tutorials, my hat giver tutorial and clothes, um, dry and clothes system tutorial. I uh, have the thumbnails uh, on the screen right now. But anyway, um, alright, so the first thing we can do is, again, we're also going to get the... We can also go ahead and duplicate the obby folder i think it's what we did before we're going to go ahead and move it into workspace all right and then you can delete everything except for the delete script and um the obby uh the floor part itself you can delete everything except for the floor part all right so now we can go ahead and delete the script inside the lava block and uh we can go ahead and name this lava to floor 
and we can also rename the hobby folder to the customize that and we can also go ahead and shrink it there we go we could be on a big platform uh, for this we can make it a bit bigger it's a bit small all right there we go so that's good and then we can of course go ahead and customize it to whatever you want Alright, it's right, so my little platform here. Um, and now we can go ahead and uh, start working on our clothing customized things. So what we can do is go to the plugins tab and click on the rig builder plugin, and we can insert a block rig. And we're gonna go ahead and rotate it. All right, and then we're gonna move the block rig and uh, the dummy into the customized folder, just like that. And we can also go ahead and name it um, to, um, let's name this shirt dummy. All right, so now that we have a shirt dummy, uh, we can go into the humanoid and um, we can also, we can just do like uh, display distance to none so that way you don't see shirt dummy on top of it because this one it should be kind of like a mannequin. Um, all right. So now, uh, we can't have like a shirt giver without a shirt, so we're going to go ahead and get our shirt uh, for the dummy. So you can go ahead and open up your browser and go to Roblox, alright? And then you're going to go ahead and find a shirt that you want your dummy to give. So I've just released some new merch as you can see, and I'm going to be using this um, as the shirt that the dummy gives. Alright, so now what you can do now is you can go up to the link and you see this, um, you should see this string of numbers right here. It's called the Roblox um, asset ID, so you can just go ahead and copy that and go back into Roblox. Alright, so now that we're in Roblox, you can go ahead and add in a shirt to the shirt dummy, just like that. And on the shirt template, we can just go ahead and paste in the ID that we just copied. Now you can see that our dummy here is wearing uh, our merch. So what we can go ahead and do is we can just duplicate this. And we can go ahead and move it um, right here. And this will be the pants dummy. We're going to have a shirt dummy and a pants dummy. Pants dummy, just like that. Just name it pants dummy. And we can remove the shirt and add in some pants. Oh, and another thing is actually, uh, before we get, move on to this one, um, on the shirt dummy, you see uh, the piece of clothing here where it says clothing. We can actually go ahead and rename it um, to shirt, just like that, um, so it's easier. Then rename this one to pants. I forgot about that. Go ahead and rename to pants. Pants, just like that. And again, in our browser, uh, we can go ahead and get some pants for him. So I'll go ahead and get some more merch. It's casual space pants that I made. Um, and you can just go ahead again and copy the asset ID just like that. And in Roblox, again, we can go ahead and paste it into the pants. All right, so now we have a short dummy and a pants dummy. And but uh, but we need a way to actually be able to buy or to um, equip the shirt and the pants. So we're gonna work on the shirt dummy first. So in the head, you can go ahead and add in a proximity prompt. All right, and then we can also and we can set the add context of it to where, and uh, we can do the uh, hold duration to zero point. Five, um, and I'll set the UI offset to zero comma C five. Let's see how that looks. All right. Um, so you can go ahead and go up to him. Uh, it's kind of in his face. That's so uh, all right. But you can just go up to him and hold E to wear. And I'm already wearing my merch. Um, but you will see that it it shows up and you can hold. And um, yeah, but now we're going to make it so that way, um, you, that way, when you hold it, um, the merch is actually put on. 
or the shirt is actually goes on the character. So we're going to go ahead and script it. So we can go ahead and add in a script to the proximity prompt. We can rename it to where script, I guess, right? All right, so now what we can do is we can go ahead and do local shirt um, ID, which is going to be equal to script dot parent um, dot parent dot parent and then dot shirt and then we can go dot shirt template right and now all we need to do is script um, not spawn script um, dot parent dot triggered colon connect function and we can uh, the parameter of the player just like that and we can do local char is going to be equal to player dot character right and char dot shirt um so we can do, not that shirt um we can do char dot yeah shirt um dot shirt temp let is going to be equal to um, shirt ID just like that so now we can go ahead and test it out all right so if you go ahead and try it um, uh, you can see nothing happens because I'm already wearing it but if I just go ahead and then change the shirt I'm just gonna go ahead and change the shirt um, so that way you know it works and then put in a different shirt template that I can see is another space shirt that's also in my group um, Uh, and now if you test it out, um, you'll be able to see it work. You only couldn't see it work before because I'm wearing the same shirt that the dummy's trying to give me. Um, so if I go ahead and test it out, uh, then you can see I got the Give Me Space shirt. Actually, I'll probably keep it as this shirt. Um, yeah, just, could, so, just so you can get like a matching set, you know. Um, but now let's go ahead and make the pants. So all we need to do is we can just duplicate this proximity prompt um, from this shirt dummy that we had already made and we can go ahead and move it into the pants dummy and into the head just like that all right and in the, in the script here instead of saying shirt id we can do pants id just like that and we can just go ahead and rewrite this line. So you can do ch uh, char dot pants, all right? Dot pants template, all right? It's going to be equal to um, and we can just do pants ID just like that. So it's going to be equal to pants ID. So now if we play it, we should have the pants and shirt working. If we go here, you can wear this one, of course, and then we can go ahead and wear this one. Nope, okay. it's not working. Let's see, a shirt is not a valid member of workspace um, model workspace customized pants dummy. What? Oh, because up here it. So up here it still says that shirt, not shirt template. Uh, so you go ahead and make this dot pants. And this can be that pants template. All right, so that's what was wrong. So now, if we test it out, it should work. All right, so now, of course, this one works. And let's try uh, the pants. Uh, and there you go. We are now wearing the space pants. So it does indeed work. So yeah, we our uh, shirt and pants giver are done. Now we're just going to make a hat giver. Um, yeah, we're going to add that into this. Alright, so what we can do for the hat giver is we can go ahead and go to the plugins tab again and also insert um, a rig. We can just do a block rig. Actually, before I do this, I'm just going to go ahead and create a little table um, for the hats to be on. Just go ahead and create that right now. Alright, so there's this little table here where the hats are be on. Alright, so now what we can go ahead and do is in the dummy, we can delete everything except uh, for the humanoid and the head because those are the two things that we need for the hat to work Right, and we can just go ahead and delete it all So now we're just left with a floating head 
And again, um, just like we did for the other NPCs and the humanoid, we can go ahead and uh, do the display distance and show it to none so we don't see the word dummy above your head. Alright. And we can also move the dummy into the customize folder. Alright, so now that we have our little head here, we can go ahead and give it a hat or accessory um, that we want to give the player. So what we can do is again, go to the Roblox website, alright? We are going to go into the avatar shop and we are going to find something that we want um, the dummy to be wearing. And it needs to be a face accessory, remember that? Alright, so what we can go ahead and do is, I'm just going to get Dominus. Dummy. I just realized I don't actually know how to spell Dominus. Um, there we go. I had to go to the Dominus, uh, to the Rollymon website to figure out how to spell it, but uh, <laughs> I found it now. So I can just go ahead. I'm just gonna go ahead and get this one. Uh, 69 million Roblox, Ro Robux, right? And we can just uh, go ahead and copy uh, the asset ID. And uh, we're going to go ahead and insert it to Roblox. All right, in order to do that is we can actually go ahead and go in the view tab. And uh, we can go ahead and open up the command bar if you don't already have it open, all right? All right. So you see it says run a command. That's obviously the command bar. You can go ahead and do game, colon, get, service, and uh, quotations. We're gonna do insert service, right? And then we can do colon load asset, and we can another more quotations, and we can just go ahead and uh, put the asset um, ID here, right? And then we can do um, dot parent is going to be equal to script, uh, no, not script. It's going to be equal to game dot workspace, and we can just do dot customize. Um, just like that, and click insert, or enter, I mean, and you can see that in the um, output, it says that it spawned in, and if we look in a customized folder, you'll see there's a new model here, and if you open it up, uh, you can actually go ahead and see the dominus, which we can put into um, the dummy, and now you can see it's very dominus. I'm gonna go ahead and move the model a little bit up so it's kind of like floating so you can actually see it. And there we go. So now we have our dummy wearing the Dominus. And then you can just go ahead and delete the model because we no longer need it. All right, so now we can go ahead and add in a part um, to the dummy. There we go. Uh, you can go ahead and move it and scale it down because it's not gonna be big, all right? And we can make it transparent and we're going to move it above the head of the dominus just like this and because this is where our little proximity prompt is going to be for it all right uh so we can go ahead and rename it rename this to prompt prompt part and we can move it inside of the head and anchor it all right there we go. All right, now we can go ahead and add in our proximity prompt. And again, we can set the action text to uh, go ahead and be where. All right, and we're gonna set the hold duration to 0.5. Again, in the keyboard control is E. And we can go ahead, let's go ahead and see how it looks. All right, so if we go over to the little dominus, uh, you can go ahead and see, oh, oh no, nothing's, I forgot to anchor everything. <laughs> uh, okay, that's gonna be a problem. But you can see, alright, so you could see the proximity prompt is there, but everything else was pretty messed up. Alright, so we're gonna, I forgot to anchor the head. We're gonna need to anchor the head and, um, the table. Wait, the table isn't, okay. Uh, we're going to go ahead and anchor all of those, first of all. And I for what I forgot to do is actually move um, the table right here. You can go ahead and name it to table, like that, into the customize thing. And that's pretty important, right? So you're going to move it to the customize folder. 
and we can also make the um the what's it called we can also make the thing inside of the head um uh yeah this prompt part we can set king collide um to false and cast shadow to false there we go so it's basically not even there all right and before we go ahead and script we also need to go ahead and duplicate um this uh what's it called this um accessory so we can just go ahead and duplicate it and we're going to go ahead and move it down into server storage just like that actually create a folder for it um so you can create a folder rename it to accessory and we can move the hooded assassin uh, dominus inside of it all right so now we can go ahead and create a script inside of the proximity prompt. All right, and we're going to do script dot, um, oops. We're gonna go ahead and do script dot parent dot triggered colon connect function, of course. And we're going to uh, set the parameter to player, DLR, all right. We can do local char uh, for character, of course. Is going to be equal to player dot character, and we can do local um, hair or hat or whatever your accessory thingy is. It's going to be equal to game dot server storage um, that um, dot accessories dot, and we can get. Um, Hooded assassin or whatever it's called, um, colon clone. All right, and we can do hat dot parent is going to be equal to character. So now, if we go ahead and go up to it, we can hold E to wear, and now you can see that I have a dominus on. And this will work with any face head accessory as long as it's a uh, face accessory. So if it goes on the head, it will work uh, with this little hat givers thing. All right. But now we're going to make a hat remover, which is the last thing. Um, so that way uh, you can actually remove the hats once you wear them. All right. So what we can do is we can duplicate the dummy and move it over here. Um, and we're actually going to make the table a bit smaller. There we go. Um, so this is going to be our hat remover So what we can do is we can go ahead and delete the accessory inside of there. I'm just gonna go ahead and make the head bigger um, There you go because there's gonna be no accessory on it And this one can actually be sitting on the table like that All right, all right, so we can go into the proximity um, part like this um, this one right here and you can go ahead and set the keyboard control to R for remove. It's not important, but it's just a extra thing I want to do. So E for wear, R to remove. If I can find the letter R, that would be nice. There we go. All right, so keyboard control R. And now we can go ahead and uh, delete everything inside of the script because this is going to have a different script. All right, so we're going to start off with script. Let's keep saying spawn, stop it. Script um, dot parent dot trigger colon connect function. And again, the parameter is going to be DLR for player. All right. And we can also create another variable for character. So character is going to be equal to player dot character. All right. And we can do now what we can do is create a for loop. So for key comma object um in pairs like that uh and we're going to do char colon get children like that and do do all right so we're going to do if object colon is a and we're going to do accessory so we're checking if all of out of all of the objects inside of a player if uh, one of the objects is a accessory, we can just do accessory. Um, then uh, we can do then local accessor 
Um, it just spelled wrong. Says Ori. I hope this how you spell it. I'm not sure actually. Um, so level accessory is going to be equal to object. All right. We're going to do local. So we're basically saying the object to be the accessory. Uh, or we're saying the accessory. Uh, it's kind of confusing. So basically, what we just did is we set the object um, or the we created a variable for the accessories. Basically, what I'm trying to say. I'm, I'm just confused. All right. So local handle um, is going to be equal to object um, colon. That's not how you spell object. Object colon find first child, and we can get the handle from the object. All right. Looks like that. All right, so now we can go ahead and create another for loop. So for i comma v in pairs, and this time we're gonna do handle colon get children. There we go. So we're going to get inside. Oh yeah, do okay. It added it for me. So we're going to get all the attachments inside of the handle. All right, and we're gonna make sure. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that all the accessories that we have are head accessories because we don't want to delete like the back accessories and stuff. Alright, so I can do if the um, dot name is equal equal to and quotation marks, we're going to get, you see inside of the head here, um, inside of the dummy's head, you see all of these face attachments. Oops, I did not mean to do that. All right. Uh, so you see all these face attachments. You have face center attachment, face front attachment, hair attachment, head attachment, and we don't need neck freak attachment, so just ignore that one. Um, so in fact, we can just go ahead and delete it. All right. Um, so these four attachments here, um, you can go ahead and do if v dot name. All right, and then we're going to do equal equal, and we're going to type in the name of one of the attachments. So we're going to do hat. At attachment, just like that, or the dot name is going to be equal equal to um, hair attachment, all right, and then we can do or the dot name is equal equal to. Uh, now we can do face front attachment. Actually, you can just go ahead and copy the name of it. We're gonna go ahead and copy face front attachment. There we go. Or v dot name is equal equal to. Um, and then we can again. Oh, I forgot to put two quotations. There we go. All right. Or v dot name is equal equal to. Uh, we can just go ahead and copy this one as well. There we go. Face center attachment. Then, oops, um, then, all right, we can do accessory colon destroy. There you go. It's a long script, I know. All right, and one last thing is we can go ahead and also, on the proximity prompt here, I just realized for the remove, on the proximity prompt, the action text still says where, uh, it's set it to remove. All right, so there we go, that should be done. Now what we're going to do is we can go ahead and we can move the customized folder into um, uh, server storage, just like that. All right, and then the main script, if we can find it, there it is. Uh, instead of having five events, we can set it to six again. Uh, not again, you can set it to six. All right, and we can create another else if here. So else. Else if um, event um, is going to be equal equal six, then uh, we're going to do uh, game dot. So we can go ahead and copy um, this again because uh, and we're going to set our own text for the event, our new text. So instead of get to higher ground, the um, event text is going to be customize. Um, your, oops, your avatar, 
And of course, I can add more shirts or pants or hats or whatever you want um, later. But I just have one hat and shirt, one shirt and one pants for tutorial sake. Alright, and then we can do local cus, um, customize um, folder, so we have to be equal to game, game dot replicate storage, um, not replicate storage, game dot server storage, I meant game dot server storage, um, dot customize and you can do colon, colon clone, right? I can do customize folder dot parent. It's going to be equal to workspace. And we can also do customize folder dot delete dot disabled. It's going to be equal to and true. There we go. All right, no, not disabled. Yeah, true, false. All right, so that should work if you go ahead and test it and we get the six events. All right, so you can see I got the event, so it's customized your avatar, and you can see that this spawned in right here. All right, so we can get our shirts, all right? We can get our pants, uh, we're looking so beautiful. All right, and then we can go ahead and get our Dominus, and then we can go ahead and remove all our hats, and then we can go ahead and continue customizing. So, as you can see, it does work. Oh, it's got it again. All right, so you can see it spawned back in after it disappeared, and then you can do it again. All right, so of course, if this was the actual game, you'd probably have more shirts and more hats to choose from. Um, that since this is just a tutorial, I only have a select few. Um, but anyways, guys, that's it for this video. Thank you guys so so much for watching this extremely long video. Um, yeah, I know it's. It took forever. This is why I took a break from it. Um, but anyway, um, if you did enjoy, please consider subscribing. We're on the road to 1,000. That's always been my dream. So please help me, uh, help me get there. And uh, uh, I, anyway, I appreciate you guys watching this far. Uh, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.